Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had your breakfast because today we're going to space. That's right, Playmobil space. Uh, you know, after uh, after any good brand goes into the medieval era, it's good to go right into the futuristic era. Uh, you know, that seems fr bright and fresh, uh, something I definitely haven't heard before from another plastic toy brand company. Uh, but yeah, so today we're going to be looking at a uh, basically a toy set that I got uh, through the thrift store, something I really wasn't really expecting uh, to find. Playmobil toys in the box. That's right, in the box. From the 1980s, in the box. Uh, I was just so tickled I had to get them right there. Uh, it was a good price. Uh, anyway, so uh, basically today, um, let me just show you the box. All right, so here we go. Here's set 3557, the Lunar Space Bulldozer, all the way from Playmo Space, 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 Space. I really like that font. It really gives it a nice plastic feel. And, you know, this is my very first Playmobil set that still was in the box. So this is really kind of special to me um, because it really gives you kind of the uh, contemporary iconography that comes with bots uh, from this age. Uh, this, this I believe, was released in 1980, uh, although it could be wrong. It could be closer to 1982. Definitely close to the release of the second Star Wars film. Um, but yeah, so basically, this is just a nice little contemporary space bulldozer, um, and well, yeah, um, this is this is nice and all, but uh, really, you need a whole fleet of dudes to help you out uh, to build your whole lunar colony. So, without further ado, on the very back, we have the instance of actual more sets. Um, the first time I've ever seen any Planetoville little space sets, really, um, and so this is all very new and very unique to me. Um, it's still you have more of the same aesthetic, very simplistic design from the bulldozer to this, what I believe is a, um, I don't know, a, a mining cart of some type. I love, I love the design that the guy's just hanging on the front, although it's not very safe. It definitely works for play value. Um, although I'm very concerned, are all these guys, they all have, they don't have gloves on at all, do they? That's very interesting. Something I hadn't noticed before. They're all... Very happy to have their arms out in the, in the vacuum of space. That's very fun. <laughs> well, not fun for them, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so they're hard to work building their their um, building uh, flat terrain for the upcoming lunar facility. So here we go. Here's a whole little lunar colony set up. Uh, this is what you can presumably build in around 1980. Uh, Playmo space, I mean. We have all kinds of... Here, oh, there's the bulldozer right there. Uh, he's still scooping up some stuff, I guess. Uh, back there is a cool little uh, spacecraft, I believe. He's opened up and uh, getting some more fuel. There's the uh, there's the mining truck there, and oh, some guy in the mittens. Oh no, he's just a different space guy there. Uh, he just it, it's interesting to see basically a, a space series that had different uh, color types for the same figure. Whereas uh, Lego often had, uh, you know, monochromatic colors uh, throughout, these guys weren't afraid to mix up and mix and match, uh, you know, white and blue and yellow and white. And, uh, oh, <laughs> that guy looked like he was puking. No, he's just picking up a rock. Oh, thank God. Um, yeah, so uh, those little uh, tools there, as you may have seen, uh, they're actually on uh, fairly simple to build. Um, they're actually uh, pre-assembled on a little sprue and you just had to uh, stick them all together. Very simple, very cool. Uh, and there's a neat little uh, rover there, which I got in that thing. Very uh, retro space there. Uh, kind of nifty. Um, I guess you could have built and uh, put stuff in the side, more tools in the side. Very interesting. Uh, over here on the side side, we have, uh, uh, I guess this guy uh, is running a little late, so uh, his, his boss is telling him to uh, hurry up with the latest shipment. And so that's all being pushed back onto this guy who's just trying to, to uh, make a break and uh, make it honest day's work. So, you know, I, I, I really str I really feel for this guy. Just a hard day's work, and all he's getting for it is just uh, a little bit of pay. Uh, it's sad. Anyway, enough guffing about, about the box. Let's look at the actual toy. As you can see, my model stickers differ slightly from the box, but that's just a minor nitpick. It, it should, doesn't really do anything to uh, detract from the play value of the toy itself. Uh, still, it has its functionality with this cool little knob and the limited up and down functionality. Uh, it can scoop underneath it, 
and up. And that's a really cool play value. Um, just something that kids really enjoy doing is just digging around in the dirt. So this is a cool little toy. Um, and it comes with a cool spaceman who really gives me these uh, 2001 Space Odyssey spaceman vibes, to be honest. I kind of expect him to take out a rogue AI at some point. But uh, no, he's just digging dirt. Uh, he's having a good time at it. Uh, depicted by that smile there, he's having a good time doing anything. But yeah, if I take off his helmet, he's having a really great time. Woo! Ah. So anyway, uh, taking a look at his helmet now, we can see that it's actually a two-layer plastic. The first layer here is actually a clear plastic that fits up inside the white helmet here. And so that's uh, that's really interesting how uh, that was actually part of the build instructions, is you got to build his helmet this way instead of the usual Lego visor on the outside of the helmet trick. So that's just very interesting from a um, from a cross-brand perspective, I guess. Uh, looking at this dead guy here. <laughs> no, he's fine. See? He's happy. Uh, he has really high boots here. Um, I guess it helps him walk on the moon. Um, although, um, well, maybe I guess they're moon boots, huh? But yeah, anyway, so uh, he's very silent. Uh, I really dig all of his chrome. And the fact that his overall space suit is just basically uh, just over, over his... Uh, over his uh, shoulders, just kind of like a jacket. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, very retro, and I'm glad he at least has mittens on. He's not exposed to the vacuum of space, although his wrists don't turn. Like, like in modern clicky figures, the wrists don't turn in this one. That's a little disappointing, but at least he can reach his controls here and have a grand old time. Stick his helmet back on. There we go. Ooh, a little squeaky. Uh, but here we can see that the tires are actually a little accentuated in the front. And that, that uh, is good play value. I like that. I uh, see that on the side there. Um, very cool. It goes forward and backward and side to side. So, yeah. Very cool little toy. Um, neat little blast from the past. I'm glad it kind of uh, walked into my thrift store. Uh, and they sold it to me for fairly cheap. Um, it's cheap enough for me to do a review and, I don't know, donate it back, I guess. Because I... Uh, <laughs> don't have very much space anymore for these things. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the life of the collector, let me tell you. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to see more of my random junk and things that I find in the thrift store or otherwise, uh, be they plastic or just random junk, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!